Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, but today you can call me your Grease Pencil Messiah because we are starting our Grease Pencil series, which is something I'm really excited about. For those of you who don't know, Blender, uh, you know, the 3D program, has a 2D animation system, which is kind of unconventional for 3D software, and it's very, very cool, so I thought I'd talk about it. So here's a simple animation I made with a rotating cube. I, I guess we'll build up to that, although it's probably going to be a couple tutorials down the line. But yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to do a full Grease Pencil series for, it's really aimed at complete beginners, so ideally somebody who hasn't even opened up Blender, although of course it will help. And for those of you who don't know, Blender is a 3D animation software, so this uh, little animation I made, it's an illusion, it's actually on a plane. Uh, there's no depth to it, but because this is 3D software, you can mix two-dimensional and three-dimensional elements. So this is kind of why Grease Pencil is a very unique system, so let me just do that. So now we have our animation inside a torus, and you see it kind of respects uh, depth. It kind of looks like it's inside the donut because it is. But uh, yeah, I guess all this stuff is kind of irrelevant to you, but just showing what's possible with Grease Pencil. And I'm also planning to make these tutorials a bit shorter uh, so they're more digestible. Anyways, um, this is probably not what you're seeing in your scene because you don't know how to animate. So you'll probably be seeing something like this. Let me just not save. Uh, you'll, you'll probably see this default scene, or even more likely, you might even see the splash screen. And this splash screen uh, depends on what version of Blender you have. I'm using 2.83 Alpha. Uh, you might be using 2.82 or something else. Don't worry about it. Uh, basically, once you're in the splash screen, what you want to do is, assuming you know nothing about Blender, is all you have to do is go to this new file and just hit 2D Animation which is what we want because we're doing 2D animation. If instead you were here and you don't have the splash screen and you don't want to open it, uh, you can also hit Control N and then go to 2D animation. It's just kind of a pop-up that does the same thing. Okay, cool. So this is pretty much where we're going to be living for the majority of this series. Uh, this is where we do all our, you know, drawing and animation and all our keyframes, all things that you know about, kind of like flash animation and all that. But again, I'm assuming you are a complete beginner. So first of all, how am I, you know, zooming in and out, navigating, maybe even going into 3D? How do I do all this? Well, right now I'm using a mouse, as in, you know, a computer mouse. Um, eventually, we're going to upgrade uh, to a tablet because that's what you want to be using when you're drawing because you can uh, kind of use it like a pencil and have variable pressure and everything. So a mouse isn't really ideal. You know, just drawing a circle is kind of hard. But uh, assuming you're also using a mouse for now, uh, zooming in and out is just the middle mouse wheel, you know, zoom in, you just scroll up and down and all that. Um, if you want to pan around, you just hold shift, and then you, um, while holding shift, you middle mouse click and drag. So pretty much we're using the middle mouse for everything, zooming in and out, shift, holding shift, and middle mouse hold uh, for panning. And then for 3D, uh, if you don't hold shift and just do this middle mouse click and drag, uh, you get this 3D stuff. But to go back to our two-dimensional uh, world where it's nicer, you just hit this camera button. So we go inside our camera view. Because really, this is a 3D space with a camera pointing forward. So we're just going inside the camera view. But, uh, you know, th this is more than you need to know, really. So zooming, panning. Um, if you are using a tablet or don't want to use these shortcuts, there's also these buttons here. So you have panning. Uh, which is this hand, you just click and drag, zooming, you know, same thing, and then this uh, gizmos for 3D. Okay, cool, so now we know how to navigate, and now the question is, how do we draw? Well, assuming you have your draw tool selected, which is, you know, this one, uh, you just click, drag, and you're, you're pretty much drawing, and you're going to notice that, yes, indeed, I am using a mouse. Uh, you can tell because these L lines are very, very jagged, and we can talk about how to solve that in the future, but yeah, now, now you're drawing, and you can see that already, already, by the way, this thing's called our viewport, it's where we do all the busy work, really. But outside this viewport, you see that we have something called, you know, it says Grease Pencil, maybe you see that it's called a dope sheet. Uh, this is where all our, like, animation information is stored, in, in other words, keyframes, if you're familiar with, that, with uh, what that means. And you can see that right now we're on the first frame meaning we're looking at frame one, and there's uh, keyframes here, meaning that, you know, whatever we draw in is baked in, and if we go to the next frame by either hitting, you know, this button to go to frame two, or dragging this over to frame two, or left and right arrows is a convenient way to do that, uh, we can change it, so we've, we have our drawing for frame one, and then for frame two, I do something like this, then I hit a uh, right arrow to go to frame three, 
do something like this, something like this. It's a horrible animation, but now when I play it, you see that it's actually switching every single time. So, you know, essentially what we've done is made an animation. Yeah, it looks like garbage, but uh, we, we do have a moving line. And really what's happening here is every frame, Blender's looking at what keyframe exists, and then it's just going to output that data. So if, we, if instead of going to frame 5, uh, we skip all the way to frame 10, and then do something like this, it's going to add a keyframe, as you see. But um, on frame 4, it's going to look like this, and then it's just going to hold that until we get to frame 9, and then it's going to switch, right? There's no interpolation in between uh, because we're doing, like, standard uh, 2D animation where we kind of have to give information if we want uh, there to be motion, right? It's not going to uh, blend between this line and this circle, although there are ways to do it, and we'll also discuss it. And one more thing you might be noticing before we wrap up this uh, super beginner tutorial where hopefully you now know, you know, navigation and how to draw and all this. Um, but one more thing you might be noticing, I feel, I feel like I've already lost my train of thought, uh, you're, you're, you see that there's this onion skinning. So this is the line that we have on this frame. For the next frame, we have this one. We can kind of see a transparent version of uh, frames in the future and the past. And, you know, this is actually a useful thing. I'm just going to delete the keyframes and start again. Um, so we can have a ball. And on the next frame, it's going to move over here and then over here. And you can kind of see, you know, where it was in the past. Um, this is called onion skinning. It's very useful for, you know, animating motion because you need to know where it was and where it will be and all this. And if you want to hide that, you can either click this button right here because this is where we have all our data stored um, in this lines layer. You can either hit this button to disable onion skinning or in this uh, onion skinning settings, uh, we can choose a bunch of stuff like how far back we're looking. So right now we're only looking one frame back, but we have, we're on frame three. We have uh, two more. Uh, frames that we can access, or actually one more, so we can just bump uh, bump that up. And now we're looking two frames in the, into the past, and if we go to frame one, we're only looking one frame into the future, so we can take this keyframes after, make it one bigger. So this is just basic onion skinning. Again, you can disable, enable, which you can also do from here, by the way, uh, which is much more convenient. And also something I should mention, because I think I've kind of neg uh, neglected it, is we have our navigation here, you know, the, this uh, middle mouse scroll and then shift and uh, middle mouse drag. But uh, for this timeline, it's kind of, you know, pretty similar. You can zoom in and out with your middle mouse wheel. And in this case, you don't need a hold shift. You can just do middle mouse drag because there's no 3D that it will default to. So this is just panning already. But um, you're going to notice that most of Blender is pretty unified in its hotkeys. So, um, yeah. And I guess one more thing uh, before we wrap this up. I know we haven't done any animation, but I'm just getting you ready for, you know, some of the harder stuff. Um, deleting stuff is pretty much, you can either hit delete or once you have some keyframes selected, you can just hit X as in, you know, X to delete it. We're crossing it out and then uh, delete keyframes. But you can also hit uh, delete on your keyboard and it's going to open the same prompt. Anyways, hopefully you understood everything, you know, super basic introduction to to Grease Pencil, but really also to Blender, because I know some people are just, you know, they heard about Grease Pencil and they're like, oh, I'll try out Blender, it's free, whatever. But they don't know all this 3D stuff that other people do. I wanted to make this as accessible as possible. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you did and you want to support this channel, the best way to do that is via Patreon to get exclusive content and a bunch of other stuff. But really, it's just a donation if you're so inclined and you have the means to do so. But uh, please join me on the next uh, free tutorial as well to, um, you know, maybe make an animation that isn't hot garbage. And we can talk a bit more about, you know, oh, how do I make the radius bigger? How do I increase the strength to get these nice, uh, you know, strokes and, you know, use airbrushes and all this. Uh, we'll talk about that in the next tutorial. See ya.